Canadians are traveling again, a lot of us, but it hasn't been easy. Between the long lineups, lost luggage, and flights and delays and cancellations. So we're here at Canada's busiest airport, Toronto Pearson International, to take an exclusive behind the scenes tour and see what makes this airport tick. We're at Terminal 3. It's only 4.30 in the morning and the lineups are already starting. We're tracking this system here. Sonny Palmer is one of Pearson's six airport duty managers. If there's a problem, he knows about it. And he's already dealing with his first challenge of the day, a huge snowstorm in the forecast. It is a huge responsibility. If anything goes wrong or anything happens, they report to you, they let you know about it. It can be stressful. Anything that happens here, we could affect air travel worldwide. This is a huge operation. More than 25 million travelers passed through Pearson last year. Travel ramped up quickly after COVID restrictions eased. We have contingencies in place from security events, aircraft incidences, uh, systems going down, be it uh, mechanical with baggage, IT systems. Uh, we have contingencies in place for all that. That's the goal, but it wasn't the reality during last year's busiest travel seasons, when Pearson was given two less than flattering titles, worst airport in the world for delays, and ranked one of the lowest in customer satisfaction of all major North American airports. We spent like 14 out of the last 24 hours here in the airport. It's just a complete mess. It's clear they weren't ready and they weren't uh, prepared to hire back all of the security and all of the ground staff that they needed to keep operation. This is absolutely uh, a, a ridiculous situation to be in. Deborah Flint is president and CEO of the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, one of many major organizations operating at Pearson. Many of the top global connecting airports had their same and similar share of struggles. Pearson was different, however, because we were the only global connecting hub that stayed shut down for as long and for as low activity as we did. So we had a very significant burden and challenge to come out of. Aviation expert John Graddick is a former industry insider. He now works as a lecturer in the aviation management program at McGill University in Montreal. People filled up those airplanes. So by the time April rolled around, July and August of 2022 was full. And then Pearson said, whoops, we're not ready for it. And then the airline said, too bad, you know, too bad, so sad, planes are full. How would you describe Pearson? It's a monster. It's, it's a big airport. It is key to the success of the Canadian aviation industry. That's a lot riding on one airport. This flight's on its way to Puerto Vallarta. First stop on our behind the scenes look, baggage. We're with one of the 44 airlines that operate out of Pearson. On the tarmac with Judith McDonald, Air Transat station manager in Toronto. We have six to seven on this aircraft plus a supervisor plus the whole team of employees that are inside the bag, uh, bag room behind you and the carousels that load the containers prior to the baggage coming outside. She's talking about the number of ground crew working to get this large flight loaded and ready to fly. I think it's important for passengers to know that there's multi layers and multi contingencies and multi facets to everything that it takes to get a baggage uh, on the aircraft. After it's checked in, luggage changes hands a few times. The airport authority moves it around the airport's underbelly. Then the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority scans the bags and does manual security checks on suspicious ones. The luggage is then handed back over to the airlines to be loaded onto the flight. At least that's what should happen. Lost baggage was a huge problem during the last busy travel seasons, ending up in piles all over the airport and leaving a lot of passengers without their belongings. There are lots of moving pieces. Jose Salamo is the airport authority's director of baggage services. He says it's one of the areas that still needs work. So if there's weather, if there's system outages, if there are staffing concerns, there are numerous instances that can lead to a bad day. And to be perfectly honest, there is ongoing conversations that are still active just to improve how we respond to that. Another big frustration for passengers are the lineups at security, run by the Federal Canadian Air Transport Security Authority. They're hoping technology will help speed things up and are calling it YYC Express, where passengers can go online to book a specific screening time before heading to the airport. Same thing at the border, where Canada's Border Services Agency is also looking to move passengers through more quickly. 
one way they're looking to speed things up is asking more travelers to use the Arrive Can app. You'd know from COVID when you had to put in your health information. Well, you don't need to do that anymore. Now you can fill in your customs forms online. So when you get to the airport, all you need to do is get your passport out, scan it, and walk right through. Next stop, behind the scenes at Air Traffic Control, where Nav Canada, a privately run corporation, tracks the hundreds of thousands of flights that take off and land at Pearson every year. These airplanes look like they're all quite close. Is that an issue? Well, that's what we're trying to do here. So the safe separation minimums are three nautical miles lateral or a thousand feet vertical, so we can cross over and under each other. Curtis Arnold's been doing the job for more than 20 years. What's it like being an air traffic controller at Canada's busiest airport? You can't tell the airplanes to stop, right? They're moving through the air somewhere between three and six miles a minute, and it's our job to manage those aircraft as they're moving and get them lined up to land. Back on the ground, remember that big snowstorm the airport duty manager was talking about earlier? It's time to prep the equipment. Glenn Henderson's ground crew is preparing for what's to come. They've been tracking the storm for days. So it started about uh, two days ago, trying to understand how much accumulation we're going to get, when is the accumulation going to come. It's one of the biggest snowstorms of the season. So we're going to head up with the crew that's in charge of clearing the five runways. They head towards the storm and we're going to go with them. The heavy equipment travels in formation, clearing the areas with the most snow. It's a snowy mess. Airplanes are getting stuck and have to be towed back to the gate. As expected, most of the flights are cancelled. A big test for Pearson will be this weekend as spring break kicks off. The airport expects Saturday to be the busiest, with about 125,000 passengers passing through. That's a 30% increase from last spring, according to the airport authority's CEO. Is Pearson equipped to handle the upcoming travel rush? Everybody's been working concertedly to provide a far more consistent, reliable and enjoyable experience. And 2023 is different than 2022 was. So will we be seeing the delays, the cancellations, the baggage lost? Can I guarantee the future? No one in, no one in this uh, industry can because weather events can happen. There can be other externalities. But what I can say is that everyone across the board is more prepared to recover faster and better for the passengers than before. Pearson's got a, it's got a ways to go to kind of get its, uh, get its, get its mojo back. As Pearson's biggest hurdle will be overcoming its poor reputation and regaining the trust of travelers. Rosa Marcatelli, CBC News, Toronto.